your passions, we are going to begin making sourdough starter. And here's what you'll need. One cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of room temperature water. And here's what you do. Add your flour to a bowl and stir in the water. Mix well to ensure that no dry flour remains. Filtered water is preferred as the chlorine in some tap waters can impede the growth of natural yeasts. Once mixed, transfer this mixture to a clean glass jar. Glass is preferred as it allows us to easily monitor the starter. Then cover it loosely with a lid, tea towel, or plastic wrap and set aside in a warm place for 24 hours. Here we are on day two. When you look at your jar, you might see some liquid on top of your mixture. This is known as hooch and can be stirred back in. As long as it smells okay, it's just fine. It's telling us that the mixture needs to be fed, so give it a good stir. Now we're going to remove about, a one, about one half of the mixture. This is, can be set aside or composted. To the remaining mixture, we're going to add one cup of whole wheat flour and half a cup of warm water. Again, filtered water if you can. Mix well and ensure that there is no dry flour left in your jar. We'll cover it loosely and set it aside for an additional 24 hours. Okay, we are back for day three. Once again, we see a bit of hooch developing in the jar, but also bubbles are on the top. That's a good thing. It also should smell good, a little bit sour, but good, like bread rising or a very light beer maybe. Give your starter a really good stir, and we're going to remove about one cup or half of the quantity that's in the jar. This part that you've removed can be composted or discarded. In a few days, you'll be able to use it in cooking. So now it's time to feed it again. We're going to give it one cup of whole wheat flour, half a cup of warm filtered water, and stir really well, ensuring that no dry flour remains in the jar. This next step simply makes it easier to measure when your starter is ready. Stretch an elastic around the jar at the level of your fed starter. When your starter doubles in size and then reducing back down again, you know that it is ripe. This can take anywhere from 5 to 14 days depending on room temperature, water temperature and your flour. After day three, we will continue to feed the starter every 12 hours in this same fashion, monitoring its growth. This time-lapse video was taken on day nine, approximately six hours after feeding and across a three hour time frame. We can see it rising to almost double and then decreasing back down to the elastic mark. Here are a few tricks that I learned while making my sourdough starter. Whole wheat flour made a difference and a warm kitchen helps a lot. Once you have gotten your starter nice and ripe, use that discard for making all sorts of different things. 
At the end of the video, I've included a few uh, links that will help and give you some great information and recipes, both for using your discard and for making sourdough bread. I hope your sourdough is as delicious and as fulfilling as mine was. Thanks for watching. Check out WPL's website for more information on great programs happening. Thanks again.